I'm here with Rich Payne. He's the public works manager for the city of Walnut Creek. And we're here to talk about rain, right? Yes. It's not raining right now, but it could start. Yes, it could start any minute, actually, given so, the clouds. What's the city doing to get ready for this round of El Nino? Well, we started preparing for this year, um, probably at the end of summer. Uh, we went around, inspected, and cleaned, uh, as necessary, all the catch basins throughout the, the city. In areas where we have, we know that we have flooding, um, we have gone through and flushed those uh, pipes and got all the siltation out of them so that they can uh, take as much water as they possibly can. So, um, Were they dirty? Yeah, we found some siltation, but uh, not because we do this every year, um, not what you typically expect. So, There's some hardworking guys behind us here uh, filling sandbags. Yes. Tell me about that. So, in the event of an emergency, we have um, sandbag stations uh, spread out throughout the city. There's five locations. There's one here at Heather Farm Park. We have one over at Larkey Park. We have a sandbag station at Howe Homestead off of Walnut Boulevard there. We also have one at Red Deer Park. The fifth station is over on Lancaster at Orchard. So Good work. You didn't yes. even know there'd be a pop quiz today. Exactly. We know where they're at. So, can somebody just drive up and pick up bags? Yeah, or so work? at each sandbag station we have a pile of sand like you see here and then we have sandbags. So one thing that you won't see at each station is a, a shovel. Um, and so if you need to go to these sandbag stations, bring your own shovel. We provide the sandbags and the sand and you can help yourself to as many as you need. That's cool. Um, do you think people are going to need them? I mean I know you're not a weather forecaster but you know, uh, what do you expect? I I think uh, if you have areas around your property that are prone to, to uh, flooding, isolated flooding, I would uh, be proactive. Um, come here when it's not raining, it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, fill as many bags as you think you're going to need and um, bank up those areas that you uh, might be susceptible to flooding. So um, that would be one thing that uh, you could do. In addition to preparing for those uh, storm events, uh, you can go out and if you have a, uh, a creek that's adjacent to your property or a ditch in front of your house, you can remove as much vegetation um, and, and debris from that uh, ditch as, as you can um, in advance. Also, anything that floats like firewood or anything that might get, you know, kind of swept away by rushing water, you want to remove that uh, away from the ditch as far as possible. And the reason for that is those, that debris can cause problems downstream and then will affect, it can affect the entire neighborhood. Right. So. Good. So aside from the catch basins, the sandbags, anything else that the city's kind of, you know, looking at? Yes. Um, what we do as well is we go around and we street sweep. Mm -hmm. uh, we do our monthly street sweeping and in areas where we have uh, a lot of mature trees, where we have a lot of leaf uh, material dropping from the trees, we go through and we hit those as necessary. And we clean up as much as we can in advance of the storm. Um, but one of the things you mentioned that what can the public do for us or re residents do for us is they can go out and when they see those catch basins and those ditches start to fill with leaf material, they can be proactive and, and literally rake that material out of uh, the ditch and, and help us clear the debris off of the uh, storm drain inlets. And that really helps us and, and it, it'll actually help the neighborhood as well. You guys recently did an exercise to get ready for when it really starts coming down, right? Yes. Tell me about that. So every year we have some kind of emergency response exercise. Um, in advance of the winter, uh, in maintenance we have what we call a maintenance departmental operations center and we exercise, we actually practice that with our public works staff. Mm -hmm. And basically what that is, is it's an efficient way to respond to, in, in this case it would be flooding. Um, we, we actually take uh, all of our staff and we assign them to specific areas throughout the city. And their job is to go out and make sure and monitor um, the ditchways and, and creeks and, and um, the, all the storm drain inlets mm -hmm. throughout the city. Uh, keep those clean, respond to specific flooding events if necessary. Uh, citizens can call if they need support for that. 
um, and the city will go out and, and uh, support them. In addition to that, if the event gets you know, more than what we can handle, we also have the ability to uh, tap into volunteers through our CERT uh, program. And uh, CERT it, uh, is there to support us, mm -hmm. uh, to help us in our response to um, any kind of emergency. In this case, it would be flooding. I'm here with Nick Zubel. He is the Emergency Preparedness Coordinator for the City of Long Creek. Nick, thanks for Hi. being here. Thanks for having me. So, we're talking about rain today. What can people do to get ready when it really starts coming down, if there's a, a good El Nino here? Well, I always start with our homes. Mm -hmm. And we all need to have an emergency supply kit. If you already have one, this is a great opportunity to restock it during this uh, holiday season. Uh, and make great gifts. And uh, some of the items that you should include in your emergency supply kit, I have one actually by you, um, can be a first aid kit, uh, a radio, extra batteries, mm -hmm. a poncho, umbrella. Um, the city's website at www.walnut-creek.org slash preparedness has a comprehensive list of emergency supplies you should include in your kit. And that's really because you don't know if you might need to evacuate mm -hmm. or if the power goes out. So uh, I highly recommend getting yourself an emergency supply kit before any uh, potential rain or heavy flooding. In terms of, you know, hours, days kind of thing, if somebody is looking at, you know, needing one of those, what is, you know, in your opinion, the length of time somebody's going to need to have That's supplies it. ready? Right. Yeah. Uh, at least 72 hours okay. in case um, you are by yourself or with your family and first responders can't get to to the roads being um, you know, heavily flooded, right. et cetera. Yeah. Um, people driving right. out driving. in the rain is very dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. Can you give some tips on you know, how to keep yourself safe there? Well, for one thing, do not drive or avoid driving to any flooded roads or waters areas. Uh, if you do come to a flooded road, immediately turn around and look for an alternate route. Um, if you get stuck in a flooded area, uh, immediately evacuate your vehicle and move to higher ground. Mm -hmm. You should also have an emergency uh, supply kit in your vehicle similar to what you have at home. Right, right, right. Smart thinking. I don't have that. And as far as your vehicle is concerned, you should definitely check your windshield wipers to make sure they work properly. Right. Uh, and, and replace them if necessary. Check your lights, your flash hazard lights. Mm -hmm. um, check your tire pressure. And uh, check the tread on your tires to make sure it's adequate. Uh, often, when we don't check to see the, the tread on our tires, um, they could be much older than we realized. And uh, vehicles can hydroplane when you hit water on major roads or freeways, causing accidents and uh, in affecting your own safety. So there really isn't all that much work to get ready, no. but it can save you. It's just basic safety tips you yeah. know, just be aware of in advance of any storm. Right. It doesn't have to be a heavy rain or heavy flooding. Um, it could just be your typical storm that's passing through. These are things you should be prepared for. We seem to know what you're talking about, so well, I've got you. Any other good tips you can give people? Um, maintain awareness. Be vigilant in your community. Um, if you're in a low-lying area that is uh, possibly prone to flooding, um, such as creeks and channels that could overflow, um, avoid those areas. Mm -hmm. Monitor your television, your radio, uh, the city's website, social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Nextdoor. A uh, ton of information on you know, weather-related alerts. Not only are you know storm canals dangerous, but creeks these days look dry. But then it starts to rain, and even you know hours or so after that, they can really fill up, right? Right. Tell me about right. that. Yeah, as they fill up, I mean, it may appear that even if that water's moving slow at first, I mean, during a storm, um, if you attempt to dump in the water, or uh, I mean, it could the flow increases over time. It's starting to become a storm channel, and it's very, very dangerous. If somebody's sitting at home and they see, you know, the creek in their backyard or anything else start to flood to, you know, an alarming level, what can they do? Can they call somebody? They can report flooding um, during normal business hours mm -hmm. between 7 o'clock a.m. and 4 o'clock p.m. Um, and, and also contact our police dispatch after hours to report flooding. So the overall message is to maintain awareness and be ready. Be ready and maintain awareness. Thanks, Thanks very much, be Nick. Be safe. All right. Thanks. Happy holidays. You too. Well, I'm 
ready for El Nino. Are you? If not, head to the city's website for more.